Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Improve Your Budgeting Process While Avoiding Excel Pitfalls. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. There are a couple of housekeeping items we would like to mention before we begin the presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please either raise your hand so that we can unmute you or you can submit your questions through the GoToWebinar box. We'll be answering questions throughout the presentation as well as following up after the presentation to answer any additional questions. I would like to introduce today's speaker. We have Kaylin Kelly, who is a GP Associates. So at this point, Kaylin, I believe we're ready to transition the presentation over to you. All right, thank you very much. So hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, just a moment. I was getting something turned on on my side. Um, so I wanted to give this presentation to kind of talk about some budgeting uh, issues that people have come across, some solutions that can help you and um, assist you in budgeting, making sure that your whole organization is all on the same page. All right, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, and just a couple housekeeping things. Here's the um, all the buttons you'll need to know about. If you want to raise your hand or ask a question, you can do that during the webinar. Um, and I will try to answer as many questions that, as everyone has. Um, the next presentation that Socius is going to have is a management reporter tips and tricks on October 20th from 1 to 2. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for that presentation as well. And don't forget, GPUG is right around the corner. So if you're not signed up yet and you still want to, you better do that very quickly. Um, and then there's a couple other uh, discounts that are happening right now, so if you see any of those that you like, uh, make sure to contact your sales rep about those. So um, we're going to start with the agenda, but first to give you a little bit of background on myself, my name is Kaylin Kelly. I'm a senior consultant here at Socius, and I have been working um, in the business intelligence and budgeting realm um, of GP for quite a few years now. And I have been in contact with a lot of different budgeting tools and a lot of different approaches to how people are handling that really exciting budgeting time of year. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a vocabulary lesson. Uh, we're going to go back to elementary school make sure that Everybody's on the same page with some acronyms that I'll be using. Uh, then we'll talk about some of the common myths, myths, excuse me, of budgeting. We're going to define the problem, which you guys probably already know what the problem is. Um, some of the current challenges, and then what what we can do to fix those. Some of the available solutions, and what they can help you accomplish. And then we'll also talk about a couple of best practices. So if that is not what you were expecting. Um, I will not be offended if you decide you have something else to do during your lunch break today. And if you are interested, well, here we go. Um, so the Socius view of analytics and CPM. So CPM, we'll get to that when we get to our vocabulary lesson. I might should have switched those two slides. Um, but it's a little bit more than reporting. It's being able to see the data in the future, being able to put some assumptions on paper and figure out exactly uh, what you need to budget for, what you need to plan for. You need to have a learning organization mindset um, so that you actually look at what happened, you see the result of what happened, and you can kind of understand why that occurred. So we need to learn from the past before we can start to predict the future. And so that really leans our our forward thinking versus looking in the rear view mirror. So it's nice to look at our actuals and see what happened, but then we need to move forward from that. We need to start looking at what's to come. Um, we did really well last year, but that was because of factors X, Y, and Z. Uh, next year, we're not going to have those factors 
for whatever reason. Uh, so we need to figure out what do we do have next year. Also, actionable data, we need to be proactive. Um, so instead of just trying to fix everything as it comes up, we see our transactions, we run our report, we try to do better next month. Um, we, we need to figure out why that occurred and if we can do anything to change it. And also, rich and rapid self-service. So instead of waiting for your IT department to come up with a resource to be able to build a new report for you, how can SOCIUS help you get these tools and put them in your back pocket so that you can generate your own report, modify a report, and get the data you really need to get? And so uh, mobile can really help with that because a lot of people are on their phones or their um, surfaces or their iPads or their other devices. So being able to get that information on a mobile device uh, is getting increasingly important. And it's very important if you are trying to get through your budget season and you're sitting in the airport, you really want to be able to pull up your budget without having to get your laptop up and set up. Um, so I wanted to start with an example of a car wash and why budgeting and forecasting can be so important to an organization. Um, so for example, at this car wash, there are a couple factors that they have determined are the reason for their income. So if a customer pays for a regular wash, they know it's going to take so many gallons of water, so much amount of soap, and it's going to take a certain amount of time. So by being able to capture all of that information and put it in a quick, easy, budgeting type report, uh, the owner of that car wash can very easily say, these car washes were paid for, I expect there to be a usage of this much soap and this much water. And if that doesn't occur, then they can start finding some, some holes in their process. Uh, so maybe they didn't do the best job hiring somebody who's collecting the cash for these car washes. Um, and that amount of water and soap report, they can match that up with their revenue and figure out if their revenue is what they expect based on um, some of the factors. All right, so now on to our vocabulary lesson. So CPM, I mentioned that earlier, it's Corporate Performance Management. And that's a term that is going to be important during the presentation uh, because that, that is kind of what we're addressing right here. The Corporate Performance Management is a term that's used to really encapsulate the, the budgeting, the forecast, the reporting, all the stuff that you are doing behind the scenes to get an overall impression of your business and how well it's doing. Um, another term that's very similar to that one is uh, BPM, so that's business performance management and kind of interchangeable sometimes. FP&A is financial planning and analysis. Some of the bigger um, customers that we've dealt with might have their own FP&A team, where those people are dedicated to just writing reports, making sure the numbers are coming out the way they want, and being able to analyze that information. If you're a smaller company, that might just be a task that you're responsible for. ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, so that's going to be your Dynamics GP, um, or AX, or any other enterprise resource planning that you have. Um, and So that's usually a software that allows you to track cash coming in the door, cash coming out the door, and where your inventory is at any given time. An ETL is an extract, transform, and load. This is how you get data from one place to another. So if you're extracting your data maybe very simply doing a smart list extract from GP, and you transform it in some way, so maybe you sort it, or you add totals, or you're updating certain information, and then loading it somewhere different. Maybe that load is just adding it to a spreadsheet where you're doing some manual calculations uh, for your budget numbers. So that ETL process can be very simple, or it can be complicated and use uh, SQL Server Integration Services, or some of the other products out there. BPNF, Budget Planning and Forecasting. It is 
October. So I'm sure a couple of you are doing that right now. You are budgeting, planning, and forecasting for the future. And uh, planning, process of achieving your goal. Budgeting is where you actually lay out a plan to where you think the entity is going to go. And then forecasting is where the entity is actually heading. Uh, so anybody that's new to the budgeting cycle, um, you might not be quite aware of the, some of these terms yet. So budgeting is what you do for the whole year ahead of time, planning out exactly what you kind of want or wish or think is going to happen. And then forecasting throughout the year is where we take that budget and we realistically put in some actuals and say, well, we had a slow first quarter, so we're probably not going to make that budget anymore. Let's forecast to see how close we're going to get now with these new assumptions. All right, so some common myths of budgeting. Hopefully you guys can appreciate some of these. So people love budgeting, right? That is really exciting. They love spending time on budgeting. I'm, I'm sorry, I really don't think that's true. And a lot of you on the other line, if I can't see your faces, I'm going to assume you're nodding. Um, people don't love spending too much time on it. It's easier when we just get it right the first time and and it's easy to update one number, having to update one number, and then copy formulas, and then add some other things in, and email it to the buddy down the hall who needs to review it before he sends it back to you. Another myth is that Excel can support my workbook of 155 tabs. You can certainly try. Uh, performance is not going to be good. So even though Excel is the preferred method for most people to budget, uh, it does have some limitations, and we're going to start talking about some of the other solutions for maybe doing something other than Excel. Another myth is that users will never insert a row or a column into your Excel workbook. When you email it to them, they will not touch it, and it will be preserved forever. Well, that's 100% not true. Uh, lots of people like to insert rows. They want to add their own data. They want to add a comment. They want to highlight or move something around. So that Excel workbook, if you have any links going anywhere else, uh, it's going to be a little tricky to preserve that. Lengthy emails are a really effective workflow. Yeah, that's, that's a myth. That's not true at all. Uh, and when you start getting those email strings going back and forth and flying between 20 different people, you're going to miss stuff. Things are going to get dropped. People are going to overlook things. And it's really hard to keep track of what's going on. Uh, legacy, legacy budgeting applications are very simple. Very good use end user tool. Well, that's not true anymore. There are some new, better budgeting tools and some of the old applications are getting phased out. It's time to get with the change and find something new. All right, so let's define the problem. One of the main problems is the separation of church and state. So the people that are going to be inputting the numbers for the budget, they need to have some kind of business information to back up that number. If you just say, oh, I think we'll send this much, if they don't have anything to back up that statement, the budget's going to be pretty useless. You need to be able to have people talking amongst the organization about what's realistic to assume. Now, we also need to have a little bit of separation there because if you give a manager extreme control and just let him tell you what he wants to spend, well, he's probably going to take advantage of that. And all, everyone on his team is going to need new laptops if he's able to control his IT budget. So we need to make sure that there's some controls in place. Another problem is consolidating multiple Excel workbooks. So after a while, some of these workbooks get really big. So a copy gets saved, tabs within the workbook get saved. So how can we get all that information in one place. So that's a problem a lot of people have, figuring out where these workbooks are going to live, how they're going to get shared, if there's going to be just one, if there's going to be multiples. Another problem we see a lot 
uh, here at SOCIUS when we are asked to give budgeting solutions is who or what or why was that change made. When these Excel workbooks are saved in a file location, you might be able to see the date that the file was updated. But without proper tracking, you're not going to know why they did that or maybe not even who did that. So tracking the changes and being able to point to something and say, I know why that number changed, here's an explanation, is something that a lot of organizations have problems with. Another thing that's difficult is standalone Excel. It just won't get you the details that you really want. That one Excel workbook is just not enough information. And the ownership from different business units. If a business unit isn't invested in the budgeting cycle, they're not going to be able to give you accurate data, and the rest of your budget is going to get thrown off. Because if one thing's wrong, it might, uh, might be dependent on a couple of other factors. Another problem we see a lot is real-time analysis. So if I have one person that's updating this budget spreadsheet, and they're the bottleneck that contains all the information, all the changes go to them, and they update that workbook. That's good to have a control, but if that person needs to take a sick day or isn't available because they're busy on another project, you're not going to get that real-time analysis of a user updating a number, saying why, and then being able to see the result immediately. And the, the numbers truly don't speak for themselves. Changing a number is not always self-explanatory. You need to know why. You need to be able to hunt down the person that decided to make that change and be able to have them explain themselves. All right, so hopefully those are a couple of things that you guys can identify with. So those are the problems. You might be sitting there saying, yes, I already know these problems because they're in my everyday life. Um, but what do we need to do about that? We need to move from tactical to strategic. So when you are uh, working to make a change, uh, to get more detail in your organization, to be a little more informed, there are uh, an inefficient process that's occurring. So budgeting through multiple worksheets, multiple spreadsheets all over the place, is a pretty inefficient way to deal with your process. Your people are not aligned um, because there's just a lack of communication and your data is going to become a silo. You're going to have one person that's looking at that budget spreadsheet and they've dedicated their life to making it updated and perfect and maybe no one else ever sees that, that data because they don't know where that worksheet lives. So to change people's minds, they need to start being more efficient. That's pretty obvious, changing from inefficient to efficient. You need to align your people. You need to figure out how you can get everybody on the same page. And we need to make sure that everybody can see the data that they need to see, and it's accessible to them, uh, and it's understandable. Uh, it's in a way that organized so that they can figure out, this is my business unit, how does it work into the whole big picture. So now some solutions. I bet, I hope at least, uh, everyone's excited to hear about the solutions that they can start investigating. Um, everyone, well, the salespeople here at Socius and a couple of other teams here are very familiar with these tools and we can help you figure out if it's the best one for you or if it's not, what one might work better. So we're going to start real simple, budgeting inside of GP. We're also going to talk about Forecaster for Dynamics GP. Some people might already be using this. Um, adaptive Insights, BI360, and de facto Global. So those are the tools we're going to talk about today. I'm going to kind of compare and contrast some of them and talk about some of the pros, cons, and uh, why you need to be using these instead of those Excel spreadsheets. And we really want to prevent that Excel workbook sprawl. All right, so the very first solution, we're going to start here cheap and dirty. Uh, this is Dynamics GP. It is at least a place for you to put the numbers. You can input the numbers here and store them in the GP database. 
So this would be specific to a GP company. This is free if you own GP, so that is pretty easy. And it is uh, going to be accessible by a couple different things. So there are multiple budgets that you can store at a time per year, per set of accounts. You can easily import and export these numbers. You can get these numbers back out by using Management Reporter, Analysis Cubes for Excel, and I didn't add it to the slide, but you can use Power BI as well. And there's a pretty simple learning curve. Uh, it's really just importing something into GP. It doesn't take too much time and effort to figure out how to do that. So here's a screenshot of what um, it would look like inside of GP, and I'm going to pop out of the presentation to show you a little bit more detail there. Um, but we have our accounts going down our rows and then our time going across. So you're going to be putting in your numbers uh, based on either a percent change or a year-to-date number you can choose. And it's just going to live in Excel, so you can use all your other worksheets to do your behind-the-scenes work. And then when you get to that final number for that one account and that one time period, you can put it in this format and load it into GP. So let's take a look um, in GP and see what that looks like. So I have a budget window uh, inside of GP, and it's under the, my financial section. And you can see I've played around in here a little bit. So if I wanted to create a new budget, I can create a new budget using a budget wizard for Excel. Or I can open a blank budget. So if I do this budget wizard, it is a pretty straightforward wizard. I'm just going to start by saying next. And I'm going to enter a new ID. And since I've already used test and the word demo a couple times, we'll call this demo2. And then I'm going to load for the whole fiscal year. I can also choose a date range. Maybe if you wanted to just do a budget for a quarter or longer than a year, maybe an 18-month budget, you can put a date range. So I'm going to choose just a single year. I'm going to create this budget for 2017 and say Next. And then I have some calculation methods that it lets me do. So I can either choose to have a blank budget or I can base my numbers on previous information. So if I wanted to do a percentage of an open year, I'm going to say Next. And it'll ask me which year I'd like to use. So I'd like to use the current year, 2016. And then I'm going to increase my budget uh, maybe by 5%. So it's going to take all of my 2016 numbers and increase them 5%. And then this screen lets you print out um, any actuals that you'd like to see to kind of compare across the years. I'm not going to include any of those today, just for export reasons. And then I'll choose what kind of accounts I want to budget for. So I care mostly about profit and loss. If you want to budget for balance sheet, that is definitely available. Uh, it's a little more common for us to see people budgeting just on their profit and loss. If you have unit accounts, you can also budget for those. Um, so that could be your square footage, maybe you're going to um, increase your office space or buy a new building, you can adjust for that in your unit accounts. Then I'm going to say next. And the accounts that I'm selecting, since I already said I want all profit and loss, I'm going to do all. I could do select accounts as well. If I wanted to choose maybe segment one as my um, cost center segment, maybe I want to just budget at one cost center at a time, I could do an individual cost center. I'm going to say all. And then it'll show me a list of all those accounts that I've selected. And so I want everything. I'm going to go ahead and say next. All right, and I'm going to save this. Um, and it will give me a summary here. And I know I'm going a little quick, but you can uh, follow this wizard on your own in GP if you'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and say finish. And I'm going to save this on my desktop just so we have quick access to it. And it's going to export all those numbers. Now, if you're happy with that budget, you can save it like it is, 
or we can open Excel in just a second when it exports, and you can change any numbers you want and then import it back into GP. So right now I have that base of 5% that's saved in GP, and then I can modify that in any way if I'd like. So we'll just wait a second for that to load. And then inside this window here, um, I'd be able to import, that's for later, that was a sneak preview. Um, I'd be able to import from Excel or export to Excel any of the budgets that I'm currently working on. And so you can see my entire budget is right here. I could change a number if I wanted to and import it back into GP. All right, so that's great. It's in GP. Now what? So you can easily export it to Excel, manipulate it in any way. It's also accessible in GP inquiry windows. You can pull the budget information into management reporter, so any of the existing reports that you have in management reporter. You can pull the budget in on your column definition. And you can also use analysis cubes to pull in a budget and a forecast, uh, one per year. So if I pull open my analysis cubes really quickly, just to show you what that looked like. I had a file of this open earlier, but I had closed it. Um, so here you can quickly see that I have my budget amount, and I can pull in my date information and quickly compare my actuals to my budget for certain years based on that information, all, in Excel, all inside Excel. I can also use Power BI if I wanted to point to the GP database and pull in some charts and graphs and make a dashboard comparing my budget information or maybe doing a trend analysis. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for just a second and see if anybody has any questions since we've talked about uh, one solution so far and it's the, the easiest one. There are no questions currently, Kaylin. Thanks, Lindsay. All right, then I will continue on. So Forecaster is another product that can help you budget on a larger scale. Um, it's included in the GP Extended Pack, but you can purchase it separately as well. It is a standalone application, uh, but it has a pre-built interface into GP. This will help you to collaborate and make sure you have some version changes. So it's a little bit more advanced than the standard GP because you can have multiple versions and have an audit trail of your changes. Uh, the budget inside of GP, once you change it, it's, it's changed. There's also a revenue and expense modeling and human resource planning built into here. It's multi-currency capable and it has some reporting um, with conditional reporting and drillbacks. One of the benefits of this is that it's a pretty short implementation cycle. It doesn't take too much effort to get it up and running. However, uh, there are, uh, here's a screenshot first, <laughs> what exactly it looks like. It's kind of like Excel, but a little beefier. Um, however, Forecaster is getting phased out. Um, so if you want to use it in the short term, you can. We wouldn't suggest this as a long-term solution since they are phasing it out. Um, and you will not be able to purchase it after May of 2017. It will not work with GP 2016. So if you're 2015 or lower, you can still use it. But if you just upgraded, this will not be an option for you. If you own Forecaster today um, and after it gets phased out, the business ready license is going to be uh, reduced, so they will no longer charge you for that forecaster after it stops existing. So that's kind of nice of Microsoft. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about forecaster. Um, if you have heard it before or you're currently using it and you want to continue using it for the next year or so, uh, please do. It is still a good 
uh, resource, but the time is, clock is ticking on that one. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is called Adaptive Insights. So Adaptive Insights is a cloud-based solution. Uh, it's 100% in the cloud, so that can be good or bad for people. Um, some people hear cloud and say, some people hear it and say, yeah, we want to move to that. So that's kind of an organizational choice. The cloud solution can be very helpful because a lot of people can access this data from uh, a little more easily since it's going to be kind of a web browser you connect through as opposed to getting on a VPN and figuring out how to get on your server to export a report. That can be really handy. It allows for integration with multiple source systems. So if you wanted to integrate your GP data as well as some other sources, maybe Salesforce or some other information you have stored, that can be pulled in. It's an organizational-wide platform, so people in finance, the executive team, sales, operating, marketing, all these people can log in and help create the budget and put in the numbers that they are anticipating and have a uh, place for them. There's also scenario modeling. So if you wanted to take a look at a variety of scenarios that might happen in the, in the budgeting future, you don't want to just stick to one budget that will for sure happen. You want to see a couple of different variations of it. You can also do what if analysis based on factors. Um, there are formulas that you can build in there. And there are some integrated dashboards. So those come out of the box. You don't have to build them. They're ready for you to use. So here's a screenshot of one of those dashboards. Um, this is kind of the home page that someone would log in and see what do I have to do today, what kind of tasks do I have that are running late. I have one that's completed and six I need to work on. Um, and then you'd be able to see when it's due, who's responsible for it, so you can go track them down and have a conversation with them. And then you'd be able to pull open any reports that have been created um, right here in the browser. And moving right along, our next solution is called BI360 by Solver. So this would be a, an in-house uh, supported solution, so it is not cloud-based. Uh, you would need to have a data warehouse, so that's going to be a, a SQL database. It has an Excel add-in, so you can access that information using Excel. So you're in your familiar Excel playground, and you have access to the database. So any numbers that are changed, you, have, you can just refresh your data. You don't need to worry about going out and opening the most recent copy. There are Excel and web-based reports here. So there's some reports, some predefined templates, and dashboards available. These, this tool also has integrated dashboards. So there are some pre-built ones that you can drag and drop your design and have some user control over exactly what you see. The, there are real-time reports that you can um, determine some transaction-level reporting. So if you wanted to take a look at some of the actuals before you make a budget decision, you can drill down to your specific sub-ledgers, um, the AP and AR information. It comes with this data warehouse that you can use um, to write additional reports off of. It's multi-company, multi-currency, supports elimination, and also has various data sources. So again, if you have data in uh, Salesforce or CRM that you want to pull in, you can make that happen. So I'm going to jump out of my PowerPoint again just to take a look at that guy. So I have a report that I've already pulled up uh, just to show you exactly what it looks like inside of Excel. So I have regular Excel open and I have a ribbon up here for BI360 reporting. Over here on my left is my um, report designer toolbar. 
Um, I have a design that I can go to to pull in any new information or anything I want to change about the report. And my layout editor is going to allow me to put in specific information. For example, I have this account that I'm really interested in. I want to look at just that one account and look at its allocations per department. So I build my report here inside of my add-in. And then when I'm ready to look at the results, I can come over here to my Run tab, put in my variables, and I can choose a specific time period to run it for, or a certain department uh, that I'm allocating from and to, and I can click Run. And that'll generate my report that says I have total expenses of 720000 and I want to allocate them to my all the allocate them to the other department. So I can allocate that balance over all of my different departments based on some kind of variable. So I have a percentage here that I have input. And then I would be able um, to store that information. I'm going to open a uh, trial balance report as well. I already opened that in preparation and forgot. Um, so here on my design ribbon, I can see that it's my account string information. I'm looking at that, all my different account groupings, um, and I'm looking at a particular set um, of departments, I believe, are my segment two. And then I can come to my Run tab, and this is my Fabricam sample database company that I'm running right now. So I can choose a time period and the departments I want to see and click Run. And then I'll have this instantaneous, uh, or close to instantaneous, trial balance available to me inside of Excel. So these numbers are pulling directly from the warehouse. If I wanted to refresh it, I can just open it up tomorrow and click Run again and all the new numbers would pull in for me. I don't need to go into GP and export a smart list or import a new number and pull another report down. It's all living here inside of Excel and it's pointed back to the warehouse. All right, so that is BI360. I'm jump back here to my PowerPoint so we can talk about the next solution which is de facto. So de facto global is another uh, warehousing type solution with an Excel add-on. So it's very similar to BI360. There are uh, definitely a different set of features. Some are similar, some are different. So there's some pros and cons. Um, those two are pretty comparable, I would say. If you're looking at one of them, don't forget to look at the other. So this allows for budgeting, forecasting, consolidation as well, and predictive analytics. There is um, an Excel add-on for this as well, and has pre-built adapters for ERPs, so your, your GP application, as well as CRM, and, uh, and a handful of other ERP systems as well. This one uses a warehouse, as well as an analysis cube design on top of that warehouse. So that's how it's a little bit different. Um, so you can determine some logic uh, ahead of time. You can create hierarchies based on particular pieces of information. So if I wanted a hierarchy for my accounts, I can organize them in uh, one defined manner, and then anyone that connects to my database will get that account hierarchy. So you don't need to worry about people putting accounts in different places because you can define that ahead of time. They're also partnered with Microsoft co-developing a advanced Cortana-based uh, analytics uh, for some predictive forecasting. So that's pretty cool extra little bonus feature. So why exactly, and let me just show a, um, Uh, just kidding. Uh, so why is our CPM model better than standalone Excel? For one, you can build in hierarchies. So most of these tools have some kind of ability to create a hierarchy 
You can predefine your departments and how they need to roll up so that you can plan for uh, consolidating certain business units or cost centers, locations. There are workflows that you can de determine um, so that you can pass one budget down to the next person to, to add their piece and when that's done it'll go to their boss for approval. You can't really do that with an Excel workbook just sitting on a network drive. Reforecasting. So for the tools like DeFacto, VI360, Adaptive Planning, we can put in multiple scenarios and you can reforecast throughout the year. So when your, assumption, when your assumptions change, you can actually do something about it. There are spreading methods. So you can take one lump sum for the year and allocate it over the year. Comments are a pretty big feature, I think, to be able to let people track why they changed a number, or even to track a comment to themselves so that the next time they pull up that report they can remember why they did it. Uh, capital expenditures, these tools also allow you to input some assumptions you might already know, like a building you're going to purchase, a set of new laptops that are going to come in the door starting January 1st, or any other big purchases you think you'll make. You can save these in the database and um, they, will, they will be stored so that you don't forget about them. Um, and so you have tracking on exactly what you thought it was going to cost. You can drill down to individual detail. Um, so all these tools allow you to continue looking at the detail behind that summary number. There's also the option to add in payroll. So if you wanted to make sure to track your personnel costs, that is a very big expense for most people, you can add a payroll model into these products. You can also use audit trails to track when changes were made, who made them, and why. And security can be defined here. So you can lock down a business unit as opposed to uh, just telling someone only open this Excel workbook, not the other one right next to it. So some of your uh, 2016 resolutions that you should carry over into 2017 when you start budgeting 2017. Don't forget about the budget. Reforecast all through the year. With these tools, you'll be able to open an existing budget and reforecast without having to start over. And you can reevaluate your assumptions throughout the year. So don't do it, don't do your budget once and then forget it exists. These tools can help you to continuously take a look at your actuals and where you think you're going to be by the end of the year so you can make some more informed decisions. You can change your mind. So factors change throughout the year. Your head count is, is probably going to go up or down or fluctuate a little bit. Um, your business is probably going to fluctuate as well. If you're a company that has a lot of seasonality, maybe the holiday season, uh, a lot of your revenue increases, and you're going to want to take that into account throughout the year. Designing the agility to plan for the what-ifs is very important. If you want to change one number just to see what's going to happen, you don't actually want to commit that number. Uh, you can do it using these tools. And don't forget to work smarter. You can get this self-service reporting so that your users can have the information instead of trying to hound the, uh, the budgeting master at your workplace or the IT director to try to get a new report built. Let the people have what they want. So don't forget to forecast throughout the year. Versioning is very important so that you keep a copy of your old forecast as well as your next one. Make sure to import your actuals for variance and reporting and rolling forecasts. So if January has already happened, we want to see those January actuals, not the budgeted January numbers. We want to see what actually happened, not what we hoped would happen. Don't forget to uh, be rolling forward throughout the year. KPIs are very important as long as they are set up. 
so make sure you know what you're looking at. A chart can look meaningful until you take a look at the numbers and all of a sudden you weren't looking at what you thought. So make sure your KPIs are determined ahead of time and you have a reason for creating each KPI. Uh, and don't forget about your head count. That changes a lot. Most people um, start the year with a number and forget to adjust it. So 64% of annual targets are obsolete within the four to six months, first four to six months of the year. And that comes from a Beyond Budgeting Roundtable. That means you do a lot of work from October to December creating that budget, and all that work is useless at the half year mark. Um, so don't forget to reforecast and make that target relevant all year round. So in terms of decision making, business intelligence can get you exactly what's happening right now. Your ERP system is going to have some data a little bit in the future. So if you just receive cash, uh, you're going to put it in your ERP system. And it's going to be hopefully not too long, but maybe a little bit until you can see it in your business intelligence reports or any of your standard reporting tools. But your CPM solution is going to be looking into the future. So if you have this solution connected to your ERP system, you're going to get all that data pulling in to the solution, as well as all of your future assumptions and all the data you anticipate to come in. And don't forget about mobile access. A lot of these tools have a uh, mobile add-on. Adaptive um, Insights is, has a very good mobile platform where you can pull up a dashboard to see exactly what's happening. All right, so I'll open it up to any questions that anybody has. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit about the options that you have available. These are some of the tools that we recommend. We have clients using all of them. Um, so we have experience in implementing and maintaining them. So if you have any questions about a specific solution or if you want any more information or, or a quote, um, you can reach out to probably your um, account manager would be the best place, but there's my information as well. There aren't any questions currently, but we will hang on um, for a few more minutes in case anybody does. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us, um, and have a great rest of your day.